Alright guys, today on Shoki Review we are going to do something different. Well, not, some, not very different, it's still a Gunpla. <laughs> but so far, it occurred to me, I have not even done any of my Master Grades. I've been doing nothing but High Grades for a while now. So uh, yeah, I might as well dig back into the log and actually get something. In fact, this was the last Master Grade I built, oddly enough. So, may as well start there and work our way through. And as you can see here, it is the Gundam Astray Blue Frame Second Revise. That's a lot to say. <laughs> now, I do know uh, Astrays in and of themselves seem to have their own offshoot following. You know, started out in Gundam Seed. I don't even remember if it was even, the Astray itself was even featured. I think it just came as an offshoot uh, manga story. And there's so many different asteroids at this point. Different red frames, different blue frame, purple frame, green frame, gold frame, black frame. It's so ridiculous. This is my first one ever, mind you. And I dug it mostly because of what you see right here. Big giant sword. And so this box is really big compared to the boxes I'm normally reviewing. So I'm going to have to be real careful with this because I'm as... I'm maxed out on how far I can be away from things. <laughs> I only have so much space to review here, guys. But it's a really cool box art. Of course, you see Astray Blue Frame here and all of its greatness just looking beautifully blue. And you see some, I'm guessing, colony or ship that's destroyed here in the background. You got nice, even details of stuff floating really close here. And I'm guessing you have the, what looks like the purple frame back here, just guessing by the image there. It's kind of hard to tell because you sort of also get the thrust from the blue frame there. And you know, it's doing this great overhand shot of swinging its giant sword. And it does say, way up here at the top, Master Grade Gundam Seed, official, official Bandai product, down here at the bottom. Like I said, I'm maxed out on my size here, guys. Oh, and like normal, we're going to slowly flip this over. You can still hear some stuff rattling around inside, spare parts and whatnot. And you've got Gundam Astray Blue Frame Second Revise Guy Murakumo's Customized Mobile Suit. I should have, should have said Customized, but oh well. Japanese to English, guys, is what happens. And then, of course, you get all the read-up here, the size and everything there. And then there's a blue fin tag right there saying, Warning, Choking Hazard, this, that, and the other. We'll go this way, and you get the front and rear shot of the great thing there. And you got the tactical arms to sword form, flight form, which we will cover all of those fun things in the actual review. And of course, like usual with the Master Grade kits, you get a little itty bitty pilot figure. Guess what I do with those? That's right, nothing. I don't even think I put the guy sitting in there. These things are some of the hardest things on a planet to have if you don't have like micro brushes. And honestly, I didn't feel like doing it. I've only done it with one or two kits as it is. So, and then of course it shows you here using the markings. And this guy came with a lot. I skipped a few. I don't really dig like the big number signs and even some of the faction signs. I don't really dig using those. So we'll see that, you know. And of course here you got the action shot. I guess it shows that the uh, front armor moves. I don't know, it just says front armor. Foot can do some ridiculous pivoting there. I'm going to talk about the feet when I get to that part of the actual review. You get the armor schneider, which I think is just talking about the nice little knife there. And then, of course, you come over here and you get the great display stand, which I do have. I don't really use it as of yet. I haven't finalized the actual display that I have for it. It's just standing in my thing. And over here, of course, you get a... Another shot of the same top box art. We'll turn around this way. And you get a couple more shots where it can split that in half. Has this form, this form. Um, I'm guessing this is all about the story. The versus Astray, I'm guessing is what that says. Yay. <laughs> if you've seen it, you know what it is. Good for you. I don't. And then you got the Tactical Arms 2, which is that big, great sword weapon that can be all kinds of different things, as you can see there. And there's the shot of everything that's in the box. So you got your runners, this is what you can build with it, and then you've got your marking stickers right there. Come over here, and I'm assuming this is a warning of uh, the same thing, don't stick this in your face, it'll hurt you. you. Got the different plastics here, all kinds of different plastics, polypropylene, polyethylene, ABS, and polyethylene. I skipped that one, I'm sorry. And uh, that says something about something. Illustration is by Tenji 
he he taka <laughs> wow all right and then 48 yen, 4800 yen so about 48 50 bucks i think is around about what i paid for it i think i paid 52 or 56 in my local hobby town and unlike normal that one doesn't flip upside down by accident whenever i get done with it so what we're gonna do go ahead and get to the actual suit mind you i did build this one probably four or five months ago so don't have to do the build part and we will be right back with that in a second all right guys now we have the astray blue frame and its sword out of the box and it is ridiculous but <laughs> it's so big like trying to get it in place and holding things just right um yeah it, it was fighting me the whole time like it, it was kind of ridiculous and you know just for a little sense of scale here there's my little wally <laughs> you know that's just that's just ridiculous how big that weapon is and heavy now mind you if i was using that little display stand to help it out it would probably work out a little bit better but uh we'll go ahead get my little wally desk mascot out of the way here and let's go ahead and we'll take the sword out of his hand and get a little bit of a close-up here i'll set this off to the side for now it's like a spaceship man <laughs> And I'm going to have to adjust my camera a few times because I'm used to doing HGs. I have to turn it up a little bit here. Now, anybody who knows anything about these little ashtrays knows that it is a kind of a masterpiece of articulation and detail. It's, this thing, when I put it together, it, you know, I took my time. It probably took me, I think, close to about a, two weeks maybe. Like, just because I was putting in so much little detail work and stuff that you probably wouldn't even notice if I didn't point it out to you. Um, but I looked at a lot of the images on the box and online and stuff just to see what could be done without going overboard. And there is quite a lot, to be honest. Now, I said earlier I didn't use a lot of the markings, but I did use all of the warning stickers. And you can see them here on the legs, especially somewhere right in here. Uh... Why is there none right there? <laughs> okay, I'm sitting here they're saying there was a lot of them, and now I can't find any. That's funny. Okay, you got some here on the hips, on the back of the leg there, uh, right here on the arm. It's really hard, but there's one there. There's one there. Uh, nothing above that. I'm weird. Actually, I believe, yep, there's a one little bitty one right there. Right in the middle of the palm, or the back of the fist. Now, like I said, don't feel, I did not feel like using the big stickers that cover like the shoulder armor and go across the chest and stuff, but I did do a lot of small detail work that you probably wouldn't notice otherwise. So you look in here, the cheek, uh, uh, Vulcans right there that painted that little orange sliver right in there. I did what I could to color match the best I could with my Gundam marker and did that. You know what, I'm going to see if I can get my camera up just a little higher here for this. Uh, there we go. I don't have to keep moving it down. <laughs> I did use a couple stickers here, and then, of course, the one that goes under the weird crest there. This little orange dot here. Oh, come on, focus. That orange dot right there. That's also paint. A little bit of gray and silver right in there in the ears. The, the whole back of the head. You got some dark gray paint there with some silver for detail, and you can see all of that copper. When I got into the copper paint, I really, really wanted to use it on this guy. And all down the neck and the spine right there, got some carp copper and the dark gray. The actual ashtray nameplate right there, painted that silver because it would be, I mean, realistically. Got these little vents back here, painted those dark gray. Come to the shoulders, these vents right here, just a little dark metallic gray so that just popped off it wasn't what i was trying to do but it popped it off anyways and come back here you can see hopefully if i can get some light in there i did tons of tiny details guys just come in here you see all kinds of silver and some gold the hydraulics in there are painted up just right it's underneath the armor mind you but it's there 
Got some silver detail here, silver details there. Some gray and silver right in there. Some metallic red right there. A little bit of silver in there. You look at the back of the elbow. This is, it was supposed to be this way. They didn't give you a sticker or anything. So dark gray here. Of course, a nice little warning sticker here. A little silver. Some gold right there because you got to have a little bit of blue and gold together. And you can see I've got the silver detail there, a little bit of copper there. Of course, painted the back of the hand, painted the wrist right there. Come over here, it's the same thing. Bend the elbow. You see some silver along with the dark gray and some gold. Same thing there, little tiny details everywhere. And this orange piece, it's hard to see right there. Painted that all up under the shoulder. It's all painted up under there. Call it unnecessary detail, I don't care. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and then even the palm of the hand, a little bit of silver and some uh, copper in there. And, you know, that's that's just it. I mean, like, even down here in the, the hip crotch area, you know, some silver mechanical detail there with some copper. And then the inside of the leg under the armor, I did a lot of detail work, and it's all covered. But I'm okay with it because I know it's there. You know, you can see some of it exposed down here and even on the feet and the this right here, you know, there's no sticker for that. That's a little bit of metallic green there. And then the feet added a little bit of silver on the feet vents. And then any of these little creases right through here, you can see some copper streaks. And, you know, this is, this is one of the things that I was really proud of. Like, just, it took me a long time. I put a lot of effort and detail into the guy. And I talked about it earlier. We'll do articulation set it right here for the time being now i do have a problem with it and i'll cover it when i get through the articulation and it has being the same kind of generation as the other seed kits it does have some of the same failings we'll talk about the head it does have some nice forward and back movement here you know it's got a little bit of a hinge along with a, a little bit of a ball joint up here and of course a ball joint down at the bottom of the neck it is limited however by its uh collar here sadly it's like it's just barely grazing it just right there and you're not going to force it because really thin plastic you don't want to do that now these shoulders can do the forward shrug go back just a little bit they can also they hinge here as well and you can see this armor bit moving with it and it's just so cool so you can go up you can go in and it all moves around like that it's so well done it's ridiculous come to the shoulder sadly but i'm gonna have to finagle this a little bit these these shoulder armors are a little weird so you got that piece flops out like that that's as far as you can move that arm you tilt the arm up and you can sort of get that out of the way a little bit you can get a little bit more arm articulation this way you can go up about that far I'm not gonna push it any farther so the shoulder the armor all of that can go up about like that it can reach about like that turn it it can since it hinges right here and of course you do move the armor and the arm together you can go all the way around for the most part until it hits right there so this little front piece does hit on the back side so I'll go ahead and like everything moves so like it's got a little flap here it's got the flap over here it's crazy like the back flap moves just about that much so it can almost fly this part does not move so we've got the full bicep rotation as usual and being this is a really good master grade you do get double jointed elbows here and there and, of course, it exposes all kinds of good armor movement when it does that. But it does have not just the ball joint wrist, but it has the extra wrist articulation joint right there. So it's got that other elbow so it can actually reach up and hold its own shoulder. Now, if you saw one of my previous reviews of an HG kit that I uh, said I wish they had that, it would be great. Now, being the same series as all the other uh, seed kits it does have articulated fingers to a degree so these three move right there you got the captured little ball joints there you get the trigger finger and the thumb I'm not gonna play with them too much if you know these hands you know why you don't play with them too much they will break they will pop off and it will be a pain in your butt now we go here 
and he does have nice ab crunch right through there. I can't remember if it can actually pop up. Yeah, hold on. Okay, so if I go ahead and pop that off, I disconnect. Okay, it wasn't supposed to be that side. It's supposed to be this. If I remember correctly, yeah, that should open it up to move a little bit more. Or I think it can actually... There we go. It can actually compact down a little bit and actually make that spine stronger for holding up some better weight. And then this little slider back here does actually move. It has a hinge. It can pivot. And this thing is what holds the back together and holds the backpack on. So you've got... Oop, wrong piece. So you've got this little piece here that the backpack attaches to. And it just sticks on right there. And you do get the waist articulation but it's hindered slightly by the front crotch armor right there you can actually pivot just enough on that ball joint that's okay you don't need to twist them a lot you can get the uh, front skirts instead of being mounted in here the front skirts are actually mounted to the side this is all one piece going around here and actually will lift up and out of the way and these are mounted on a little ball joint in and of themselves so they're you know they can move around a little bit same thing with the side it's just on a little ball skirt there. Though, I'm going to be honest, it looks like it's a fanny pack, doesn't it? A side fanny pack, as it were. And the butt skirt actually does move a little bit. If you're not, if you're used to HGs like I am, at least at the moment, oh, that popped right off. That looks like it's supposed to come off or something else. Now, a lot of the uh, Astrays have the same engineering and similar armor. They just deal with different armaments, but this is at least what the blue frame looks like. Oh yeah, also painted these orange details. Almost all of the orange details that aren't clearly a major body part, I had to paint on. So, wow. It's been a while since I looked at this guy. I did a lot of tiny details, like little silver bits in there. Sorry, tooting my own horn. Can't help it. Now you do get... Gotta move the gun out of the way. You can almost do the splits. I don't want to force it. Hold on. Never force your kids to do things that they don't feel like they're going to do. So he can go about that far. He can't do the full Jean-Claude. And if you look in there, it's not it's just these normal normal uh crotch hip joints there. So you don't get the slide forward and back that you can on some other kits. Now you do get the normal ball sort of uh two piece little hip or uh top of the hip joint there, thigh joint, as it were. Make sure that's popped in there really good. You can get some thigh swivel, but only about that much before it runs into everything else. Technically, these little holsters are on a ball joint. They can go all the way around. And we'll look at these knives when we get to accessories. Now, being an Astray, it has ridiculous, ridiculous knee and leg articulation. Ah! <laughs> that was so stiff. Okay, so you got a joint here. You've got a joint here. And technically, this moves. So it's almost a triple jointed knee. Also, this armor in and of itself, it'll slide away on its own. But if you notice when I did that, all of that armor moves with the joints as it goes. You got to be a little careful. They want to bind up a little bit. Actually, you can see in here, you can see a little bit more paint detail under the knee. But that is ridiculous how far that can go. It's only really limited by the fact that it's hitting the armor. And then we come down to the foot. This is a very big ankle joint. So the ankle starts up here, and it's got a nice little ball joint, and then all these ankle skirts slash thrusters right there. So it's a ball joint captured up there, and you got a ball joint captured here on a swivel hinge like that. So you can get some good side feet articulation like that, and then of course the whole foot moves. I love the fact that all of this armor moves as well, and it has the cutouts for it, and you can see like this little, I don't know exactly what that is, but painted that too. <laughs> The details that they really put in this guy are impressive. Oh, yeah, I even painted some of the bottom of the foot there, a little silver and, and uh, copper details. And the foot can pivot like so. And this will be the problem I have with this guy, which is a very similar problem that I have with my strikes. Because the foot tilts that way instead of downward, it has a tendency, especially when holding something heavy like, I don't know, a giant sword, it tends to want to slowly start falling forward until it just falls over. And MG Exia is also very, very guilty of that. And, you know, even though I love those kits, that is a serious problem. And, like, they need, like, foot locks to 
keep it from happening. What fell off? Oh, that's a whole back of the leg. Let's go ahead and stick that back in there. I don't even know how that fell off. Did anybody see how that happened? I think it just fell off. All right, well, let's talk quickly about accessories because he has a couple. Then we'll talk about the Lidvedi knives. I think they were called the Schneiders. Stay. Uh, I love these little knives. They are just wicked. Wicked, wicked little knives. And you got, I painted a little bit of silver and some copper detail on there just to make them pretty. And he does hold them with these type of hands, these, this particular generation of hands. You always got the little slot in the handle, which goes into the little long peg in the hand. So, and the way this one was designed, that the index finger is supposed to go through the hole in the knife somehow and stay in place, sort of. Okay. This is one problem with these. Okay, so it is holding it technically, but it is not pegged in. So you can see it can hold it decently because it doesn't weigh anything. Anything with a certain amount of weight, just having that little peg on the hand is not going to hold it. It is a problem with the double O's. It's a problem with the seed kits. And like I said, love these things for, you know, some people would say maybe the golden age of, uh, master grades with i mean with the articulation level and some of the details yes i will agree that certain things much like the hands and the feet are a problem that they should have seen coming so like the knife that is a cool little feature now i did knock this off earlier but i'll go ahead and show it off this is part of the backpack it'll focus come on there we go and these are actually um I believe they're ammo clips for when it's in gun mode and I will show that off later but of course I did a little bit of detailing right there now it, it only has just this peg for holding it on I guess that's why it falls off so easily all the time where's it go right there so and it looks like little wing little wings on the butt they're butt wings guys butt wings of ammo all right stay stay and we will talk about the tactical arms. Two? Was it two or three guys? Three? Seven? Tactical arms of many? Two. I was right the first time. <laughs> and this is the blue version. Now, one of the red frames does, in fact, come with this exact same weapon. And I do have that kit, and I will be building it later on. But this one is a little bit above normal level of detail. This would be almost exclusively blue, gray, and white. But I added a ton of detail, as you can see. Little copper detail here on the handle. Silver on the handle. The little fake ratchet joints right there. Some silver on that. Come back here, painted the thrusters dark gray. In here on the handle, the extra... Focus. Focus. There we go. Got some copper detail inside there. A little bit of silver detail as well. This thing looks like a spaceship from this angle in particular. Copper in here on these lines. Copper inside the dots there. Silver, dark gray. Then just panel lining along here. Dark gray right through here. They don't even give you stickers for these details. Um, I think it's metallic. Either metallic gray or it's silver right there. It's hard to tell. And then you get a couple of the markings that it comes with. A little bit of copper there. A little bit of silver there. I'm just going to keep saying that over and over. And then you got these things here, little joints, all these things. This area right here, it even shows it in the artwork. That is supposed to be dark gray. They don't even give you anything for that. And then just that little copper dot there. Silver details, silver details, silver details all along here. And, of course, little marking details. that just It breaks up everything. Otherwise, it would just be very boring. And then these stickers, these are one of the only big uh, stickers I put on here. They are clear, and they go over the orange bit. And I, since I wasn't so sure about them, I put them on one side, but not the other. So this side is only just slightly more plain. Now we will go over what this thing does, because this is where all of the gimmicks for the, for the kit are. So it's not just one giant sword. It can, in fact, be a couple of giant swords, if I can get it off. That's it. Okay. <laughs> I had to make sure that's all I did. Okay. I was scared there for a second. It's been a while since I transformed it. So pull that off. And of course you see it in sort of gun mode here. And then I can show off 
these details here on these pulley and hydraulic systems there. Just, you know, basically all I did was imagine what, you know, clockwork or mechanical stuff would look like. So, close that up real quick. Oh yeah, even a little bit of stuff there on those vents. We'll look at the gun mode here in a second. I want to show off these. Now, I do, I forgot that the clear plastic parts are actually still in the box. But this is the sword mode. You can hold them in each hand. Kind of, you're supposed to hold them underhand in each hand. And then the big clear plastic energy parts would go over it like that. And this is pretty sweet in this mode. Not going to lie. It turns it into a really nice, like, forearm knife. I do like that. Stop focusing on the thing. There we go. And then, of course, you have the other one. It's exactly the same as it should be. Like that. Come on. There we go. Now, I have this peg. You will have to forgive me. I don't remember everything it does because it's been a few months. But I believe that is for a different mode. Okay, so what we'll do... Let's go ahead and we'll take it into gun mode real quick. So, you have the thing. Turn the handle like so. I believe you turn these this way. And of course you get the nice quad barrel machine gun here with dual cameras on it. You have your sword tops. And they basically plug on like this to become uprights for the gun. And I keep moving my light. Though you guys probably didn't see that. And then... Oh, yeah, hold on. I got this upside down. Because this is the trigger handle here. Okay. So, like I said, I'm not going to bother putting it in its hands and trying to get it to hold everything just perfectly. Because it will be a pain in the butt, guys. It really, really will. So, you kind of get it in this cool upright gun turret mode. And I do really, really like that. Now, of course, there is another mode. Because... It has to have more modes, right? And that is the backpack mode, or flying mode. Come down here, you pull the sword up and out. Fold the blade in like so. Do the same thing on this side. Double hinge there. Do like that. Uh, which way am I facing? Okay. Pull this out. Flop that down. Is that right? Hold on. Yeah, it's come. Ah! Pulled the whole handle off. That's okay. Just pegs right back in. And that's going to be pretty much it, if I remember correctly. I think so. I thought it went a little bit further. Let me see. Hold on. There we go. Okay. So the backside folds a little bit further down. I'm not sure if that's really that specific or um, it's just being a pain in my butt. So this is its cool backpack birdie mode. That's what I call it. So we'll go ahead and we'll put it on the backpack. It plugs in right here with that big tab. The tab and that uh, socket right into there. And it's going to stay there and be very happy, isn't it? Yes, yes it is. It's very heavy, guys. And like this is where the the knee the foot problem came in. See now it wants to tilt forward, so I gotta bend the knees a little bit, and now he looks a little bit squat. <laughs> so while I like this guy, it does suffer from the heavy backpack syndrome. Now I'm go ahead and tilt, so you can see in wing mode like so, and then it just falls off. That is a major problem with that because it's only these two connections. It doesn't have like any kind of spring-loaded fastener or any really it's not even a very tight connection it just sort of rests on there more than anything as long as he's tilting forward it should stay on without a problem but as long as it's wanting to fall backwards like it currently is then it is a problem let's see here i think i can get it do these are cool no, okay i forgot like i said it's been a little while since i played with it so you can spread the wings out about yay far of course that happens too all right so there it's wanting to be happy for the time being so it has gun mode sword mode Small sword mode and flight mode on the back. And, of course, once again, it wants to fall off. See? That's why I don't tend to leave it in that mode. I tend to leave it in big sword mode, but it's okay. Go ahead and put these in here. Uh, where does it connect to? Right in there? No. Oh, I got it upside down. Okay, I'm sorry. Sorry, guys. I don't play with it that often. 
that sounded wrong. Okay, and these actually do tab in, so these are actually mechanically held in place really well. So that's going to be it for the Astray Blue Frame, guys. Well, I like it. It is very fiddly, as a lot of the seed kits are. I'm going to go ahead and put this back into sword mode. Now, I do love the fact that, you know, it has a lot of good moving parts, but sometimes, see, like that right there, things just don't happen right, see? Little, small, tiny operator error turns into a big mess sometimes. Like, I mean, like, it can just come apart at the seams for no apparent reason. Come in here, and this does snap together decently. You know, it's kind of a loose fit. This does remind me really much of the, uh, the uh, 007 swords, like GN Sword 2, 4, I forget which one it is, I think it's a 4, but I do like this. These things are also pretty loose. This one's okay, this one is loose, so I'm probably going to have to go in there with some uh, Future Shine or Pledge or something and tighten that up a little bit. But if you're really a fan of Astray, if you like Gundams with a whole lot of details, this is it. But mind you, you're going to have to add some good details too. This would be a good kit otherwise. But if you really want it to pop and really make a difference, get you get you a little bit of Gundam marker, maybe even some Tamiya paints and a couple of brushes and go to town. I mean this you know this one's just me being able to point out, okay, this should look like this, this should look like this. You know, just a few mechanical details. Not everybody has that, I understand it. You know, not everybody's on the same level when it comes to building. But you know, do something. I mean so these things just they really really react well to customization they're really good kit i don't say for starters but for people who you know have been used to like high grades and things that don't have a whole lot of mobility or a whole lot of articulation this is great for that so go out see if you can get you one i preferred this one just because of the big sword they of course have the blue frame uh d version that has tons and tons of tiny swords they have the red frame multiple different versions of that and uh, they all have different and cool weaponry. Even one turns into like a big bow instead of a sword or a gun. And that's really cool. So that's it for this guy. Make sure you like and subscribe. Check out all my other Gunplay reviews. All my Shoki quickies. We will be moving on to some more Master Grades very soon. And uh, that's it for this time, guys. I will catch you on the next review. And remember to always keep on building.